that as we get into 2014, that is very vital and important uh, that we talk about commitment. Uh, I believe that it's a call to live for God unapologetically. Yes. Unapolog don't, you know, I have, I, I've gotten so disgusted uh, with the fact that to be a Christian today, you have to apologize for your beliefs. You have to apologize for what you believe, what you stand for, and, and people look at you and say, you shouldn't believe that and all that other kind of stuff. Well, I'm sorry, I'm committed. And, and being committed is to, to live for him unapologetically and boldly without conforming to how the world defines our relationship with God. And we must all understand that the world is trying to define to us as Christians how we ought to live Christianity. Okay, it, it's in, I don't know, it, it seems to be that we listen to the world when the world tells us, you know, this is how you ought to live for God or this is what you ought to believe or this is what you ought to do. How in the world can the world who does not know the God that I know feel like they can have the right to tell me how I should live for my God? For instance, you can't come to my house and tell me how to live with my wife because you don't live in my house. You don't, you don't live in my house. You don't know what we like. You don't know what we enjoy. So if we're sitting together watching a TV program, you can't come in there and change it. Somebody, that's not for y'all. Y'all need to watch something else. No, you got, how in the world are you going to tell us how we do Joneses? You, you can't tell us how to do Jones. Amen. We're professionals in that. We know how to do Jones. And as well, I believe it's time for us as Christians to know how to do Christianity, Amen. Amen. to know how to do relationship with God, to know, to know how to be committed to God, and then become so committed that we're unapologetic about our commitment. Okay, we're unapologetic about our commitment, and we're bold about our commitment, because everybody else is bold now. Amen. Everybody coming out of closets and everything else. So everybody else won't be bold. I think it's time for the church to be bold. And I think that God is calling for some bold people that are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Come on now. I know some of y'all are uncomfortable with my preaching already because, because we don't want to be bold. We, we like to blend them in. I don't want nobody to know that I'm a Christian. I don't want nobody to be offended by my being here. And I'm glad that Jesus didn't take that same mentality when he came here. Can you imagine if Jesus took that mentality? I don't want nobody, no, don't nobody live. I don't want nobody, no, 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 no. I'm glad John the Baptist didn't take that mentality. I'm, just, I'm glad that Isaiah and Jeremiah and those, those that serve God, that they didn't take that mentality. They understood that the Bible tells us that we ought to cry loud and spare not. That, that we have to let people know. And then when Jesus, as he's departing, he said, tells, every, tells all of us, he says, hey, y'all are going to be my witnesses unto me. Now, unfortunately, in this little modern, watered-down churches that we're in now, we, we, we have taken what he said and we have, we have flipped it to be convenient to the way we want to do it. So what we say, so this is what we say. Well, you can be a silent witness. You know why we say you can be a silent witness? Because that way it, it gets, us, gets us off the hook from having to say something. Okay? He never called us to be a silent witness. He wanted us to witness with words. He wanted us to declare the gospel. He wanted us to, to give, to share the good news. Why y'all ain't saying nothing to me? Why y'all ain't? He wanted us to share the good news. And so as I'm talking about this commitment on today, we're going to talk about how we're going to be committed to God. So Matthew chapter 4, Matthew chapter 4, verses 18 and 19. Uh, I'm, I'm reading on today just because I gave Annette the day off. I didn't fire her or nothing like that. I gave her the day off. Um, you you got to tell people stuff like that because they'll be coming up to Annette at the service. You all right? Just want you to know I'm praying for you. I know church people, man. I just know. So I'm reading the day. I gave her the day off. Matthew chapter 4, verses 18 and 19 says, One day as Jesus was walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, also called Peter and Andrew, throwing a, throwing a net into the water where they fish for a living. Jesus called out to them, Come follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people. So again, I'm talking about commitment. There are two things that we notice here in this verse, at verse 19. Number one, these fishermen gave complete, complete, complete commitment to Christ. Christ says to them, come follow me. The next verse says that they left their nets. They left their nets and they began to follow Jesus Christ. And so they, they gave Christ a complete commitment without knowing all the details. 
Hmm? Although he says to them, I'm going to make you fishes of men. He's not telling them how I'm going to make you fishes of men. What's going to be the process? What's going to be going on? So there must have been something so attractive about Jesus Christ that they were willing to make a commitment without all the details. We must understand that, that as if we say that we are real Christians, we need, we need to stop asking God all the time for the details before we make a commitment. We must make a commitment to him because he is Jesus. Okay, so they make a commitment and they just leave their nets and they make what I call a instant commitment because this Bible says that they left their nets at once. As I said on this morning, you know how we are in the church. We have to pray for stuff, pray about stuff for six months. Huh? If the Lord tells you to do something, we pray about it and then we pray about it some more. Then we pray about it some more. And then we call some people so they can pray about it with us. And then, then we go on a, a six week fast. We already know what God told us, but we're going to go on a six week Daniel fast, by the way. And we're going we're gonna to pray about it some more. But they didn't pray about it. They heard the voice of the Lord. They heard maybe this is the problem. They heard the voice of the Lord, knew it was the voice of the Lord, and they followed him at once. It would be wonderful if we become so committed to God that when God speaks to us about a thing, that we don't spend six months trying to talk God out of it. Yeah, I want that to sink in real quickly. Okay, it would be good that when God tells us a thing, that we wouldn't spend six months praying about the thing in order to talk God out of it. Because I know that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to talk God out of it. I'm trying to say, God, you really don't want me to do that. And so, God, it must be somebody else that you want to do that. No, 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 no. Come on now. That's what we're doing. We're really trying to talk God out of it. But can I tell you something? I've been saved now since 19... 81 I've been saved since 1981 I got to tell you this you can't talk God out of anything if God wants you to preach you're gonna preach if God wants you to sing you're gonna sing if God wants you to work with children you're gonna work with children if God wants you to dance you're gonna dance if God wants you to be a deacon you're gonna be a deacon if God wants you to be whatever God wants you to be you're gonna have to be it because you can't talk God out of it Paul wrote this in Romans he wrote this in Romans he says that the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance now this does not mean what we have made it to mean this does not mean that the gifts and callings of God mean mean that you don't have to repent of your sin it don't mean that what it means is that when God gives you a thing to do that God is not going to change his mind about it so you can't talk God out of it. I tried. I wouldn't be a pastor today if I could have talked God out of it, but it did not work. And so in our commitment to God, we need to understand that we need to have an instant commitment to God. Now, the definition of commitment that I am using in this series is the state of being bound, the state of being bound emotionally or intellectually to a course of action or to another person or persons. Again, the definition of commitment is the state of being bound emotionally or intellectually intellectually to a course of action or to another person or persons. I'm being bound emotionally and intellectually to a course of action or to another person or person. Commitment means that I am bound to God. I'm bound to God. I need you to understand something about this and I think uh, there's some people that have this kind of attitude like I got. This is real to me. This is this real to me. This, this, this is real to me. I'm not just intellectually bound by it, but I'm also emotionally bound by it. So let me warn you of something. Don't mess with my Jesus. I'm just letting you know right now. Don't be messing with my Jesus because I'm getting tired of people messing with my Jesus and, 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 and talking about and, and, and talking about Jesus and all the other kind of stuff. And he's not this and he's not that and all that kind of stuff. No, baby, this is real to me. This is Jesus is real. I know the Lord is real to me. And, and, and so so you can't make me doubt him. I know too much about him. I, maybe I'm talking to the wrong crowd in here. Maybe, maybe, is there anybody in here with this Jesus is real to you and you don't want people to be messing? Don't be messing with my Jesus now. You, 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 you can talk about my pastor. You can talk about my first lady, but don't talk about my Jesus. You, you, can, you can talk about my church. You can talk about all the other guys, but don't mess with my Jesus because I'm bound to my Jesus. You don't know what he did for me. You don't know what he brought me out of. You don't know what he delivered me from. You, don't, you weren't there when he saved me. You weren't there when he healed me, set me free, and delivered me. You don't know how he kept my mind when I could have lost my mind. You just don't know. Please don't talk about my Jesus because he brought me out of too much for me to allow you to put your mouth on my Jesus. Is there anybody in here that's so committed to him you don't want to hear people talking about him? 
gets on my nerves. Just gets on my nerves when people. I, I watch a lot of stuff. You know, some of your favorite, you know, newscasts on CNN and all that other kind of stuff. And they got the nerve to talk about my Jesus. I know that's your favorite. I know that's your favorite. And all that kind of stuff. You got the nerve, but don't be talking about my Jesus. I don't know. Don't be talking about my Jesus, cause He saved me, and I know He's worthy to be praised, and I know He's worthy of my devotion and my commitment. So I don't care if you got everything neg negative to say. It's not gonna change my mind. I promised him that I would serve him till I die. My mind's just made up about that. And that's the type of commitment that it's going to take. And the thing about that's really going on in church today is that there are a lot of people who are professional churchgoers, but are not committed to Jesus. He never wanted us to be a professional churchgoer. He wanted us to be committed to serving him, loving him, being in the place that we have a relationship with him. It doesn't mean a hill of beans for you to come to church if you don't have a relationship with him. It does not have mean a hill of beans for you to work in a ministry and you don't have relationship with him. In the end time, the Bible says that there were going to be people that would come to him and say, I prophesied in your name. I cast out devils in your name. And they, he's going to say to them, I don't even know you. Paul, 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 the Apostle Paul puts it this way. He says, he says, I bring myself under subjection, lest that while I have preached to others, I myself become a castaway. In other words, I can't preach to you to get you committed, and then I'm not committed myself. Is anybody up in the building besides me today? So we've got to be committed to him, tied to him, tied to him where, where we stop allowing people to to come in and damage our faith damage our faith in in Jesus Christ you you've got too much of a track record concerning Jesus and what he has done for you to let some little joker come in your in your surroundings and convince you that it doesn't take all that you must have lost your cotton picking mind to have the nerve to tell me that it don't take all this baby it takes this and some more if you would have knew the condition that I I was in before I met him you would understand why I do what I do is there anybody that do what you do and you are really not concerned with people feel up oh my. I'm committed let me let me let me show you some scriptures I, I, I didn't mean to get so excited so so quickly but 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 I, I want to show you a scripture of the disciples and their commitment they they just like you know I'm committed get your Bible John 6 John 6 66 John 6 66 and uh, we read through verse 69 and I'm, I, I think I'm reading King James Version y'all forgive me I, I think that's how I copied it over I, I didn't uh, whatever um, you can follow me in whatever version you have but John 6 and 66 check, check this out it says from that time from that time Jesus Jesus had, by the way, let me tell you what's going on. Jesus had just finished teaching. He was just finished teaching. He was telling some people that if you're going to come to, if you're going to get to the father, you must come through me. Amen. If you're going to get to the father, you must come through me. In other words, you don't go through any other religion to get to God. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, I knew I would lose my crowd right there. You don't get, you don't go through any other religion. It is amazing that Christians don't believe this any longer. Christians used to believe that the only way to God was what was through Jesus Christ. For Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Now, in Christianity, now we have allowed other paths uh, to, to, to lead to Jesus. I mean, to God. We've allowed, you know, it's all right if you if you another religion it's all right if you serve something else and you do something else that's gonna get you to God too that ain't what the Bible teaches the Bible teaches that the only way to the Father is through Jesus Christ now that may upset you and I'm glad it's upsetting you because I plan on preaching to I got a few folk upset today we must be committed to Jesus and to Jesus only in order to get to the Father and so Jesus, Jesus, one day he was teaching that. My, my email address, address is Pastor Jones at nc.rr.com. So Jesus well, um, was teaching this, and, 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 and people got upset at Jesus. So if they got upset at Jesus about the teaching, no doubt somebody going to get upset at me. So I was prepared for that. And so it says from that time, from that time, many of his disciples, listen to this word, disciples, not just folk that were hanging around, but many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. 
then then verse 67 then said jesus unto the 12 will you also go away ah uh, but the 12 they were so bound so tied to him that simon peter asked him lord to, to who are we gonna go to <laughs> thou hast the words of eternal life and look listen to verse 69 and we believe and are sure we believe and are sure that thou art the christ the son of the living god i said on this morning i said on this morning i need to repeat it here this afternoon is that in order to have a commitment you must believe in a cause if you don't believe in a cause you will never have a commitment and so I, I use the illustration of the civil rights movement in, that began in the 50s that these people believed in the cause. They believed in equality for all races. And because they believed in that cause, they were willing to be bit by dogs, to be bitten. They were willing to have water hoses uh, 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 sprayed on them and then come back the next week and stand up again and say, we demand equality. Why? Because they believed in the cause and they were committed to the cause and they were not going to allow anybody to sway them from their commitment. Is anybody here? hearing me when you believe see when you believe the word of God when you believe what he speaks in his word when you believe that he is the Christ the son of the living God you become committed to that and when you become committed to that you don't care what anybody else got to say you don't care what they're doing you don't care what you have to go through because of what you believe you still stand on your belief and say come hell or high water I'm gonna be right here because I am committed by the way I need you to listen to me I need you to listen to me because we you must understand that as we roll quicker and quicker to the close of the ages that it is going to take something to be committed to Christ it, you ought to you ought to see that now that it's taking something to stand up and say I'm committed to Christ I'm living for Christ because as soon as you start speaking the name Jesus folk get upset they they want to put you out they don't want to have you around why are you always bringing up that Jesus fella you know Jesus man you can talk about any other religion you can say any other thing other religions can take breaks in the break room and talk about they can lay stuff out and pray three times a day but as soon as you start talking about Jesus they don't want you around they don't want to talk to you they want to they want you off the job so it's going to take something and that's why i need to preach this y'all it's going to take something but we got to be bound to god these disciples were so bound to god that there was no plan a plan b to their plan a their plan a is that we tied to you ain't nowhere else for us to go there ain't no other messiah there is no other savior there is no other jesus we are bound to you and that's how we've got to be listen y'all i know y'all don't like my preaching so i'm gonna just keep moving but this is how we've got to be in 2014 we've got to be bound to him i was reading or i was i was thinking the other day about david and david after he had sinned against god with with bathsheba and and, and he had committed adultery and, and and his sin has been revealed and I, I thought about that prayer of david in psalm 51 where david begins to cry out but there's one particular thing that caught my attention he said to god please don't take your spirit from me the reason why he didn't want God to take the spirit from him because the spirit represented the presence of God and he was so bound to God even though he messed up and sinned against God he was so bound to God he said God please don't take away the only connection that I have with you because if you take that away no telling what's going to happen to me I'm at that place now in my life I don't know if you're there but I'm so committed to him that God please don't take away anything that you put into my life because I don't know what's going to happen I don't know what would go down if I lost what I had you know I just felt the moment of praise I just felt the moment of praise the reason why I felt the moment of praise because even though you've been through what you've been through you didn't lose what you had Oh, I wish I had somebody in here. You didn't lose what you had. Thank you, Lord. 
So, so Peter, Peter, you remember Peter, Peter, Peter is this dude. Remember when he got that revelation? Y'all remember when he got that revelation that I read in verse 69 about him, Jesus being the Christ, the son living God. Remember Jesus was having a discussion with his, with his disciples. He wanted to know what the word on the street was concerning him. And, and he said, what, what are people saying about me? And they, they said to him, they gave him a good report. They was like, you know, some say you're Jeremiah. Cause you know, if somebody would have said you were Jeremiah, you probably been like, oh yeah, y'all talking now. You know, some say you're Jeremiah. Some say you might be Elijah and all that other kind of stuff. And finally, Jesus said to him, well, 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 let me ask y'all a question. Who do you say that I am? Who, who, do, you, who do you say that I am? And, and, and Peter, Peter, Peter got revelation. Mm -hmm. Revelation. He says, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. It was revealed to him from heaven. But Jesus says, flesh and blood. You didn't get that from flesh and blood. That came from my father in heaven. And you see, the reason why I'm committed, I'm not committed because somebody told me something. I, I, I'm, not com I'm not committed based upon what, what happened to you. I'm committed based upon what I got. <laughs> I've received my own personal revelation that, that, that he is the Christ, the son of the living God. And you got to understand, that's what people need in order to be saved, in order to be delivered and set free. Until they get their own personal revelation that he is the Christ, the son of the living God, they're going to keep doing what they do and acting the way that they act. Why? Because they don't have a revelation. And you got to understand, you're sitting around some folk that just don't have a revelation. And people that don't have a revelation just won't operate the way that you operate based on a revelation. See, I got a revelation. That's why I ain't got to wait till I get here to praise God. I got a revelation. Praise works in my house. Praise works in my car. Why? Revelation. You got to have a revelation got to have a revelation that revelation causes a commitment it causes a commitment let me hurry here because I'm I feel like just preaching a while so commitment to God commitment to God arises from faith in the person of Jesus Christ because I have faith in Jesus I have commitment to God I believe the Jesus that went to Calvary to die to give his life to shed his blood who had nails put into his hands can I preach the gospel nails put into his feet who was pierced in his side who took the crown of thorns upon his head I believe that that Jesus did that for me I believe he did that for me I believe what Isaiah picked up prophetically years before he got here that he was wounded for my transgressions that he was bruised for my iniquities that the chastisement of my peace was upon him and with his stripes I am healed I believe the story I believe it because it has not become it is not just words on the pages it is a revelation in my heart and because it's revelation in my heart I am committed to serve my God based upon what he has done is there anybody here hearing me I'm committed to serve my God based upon this revelation that I have of him I'm bound to serve him can I show you some scriptures can I show y'all some more scriptures come on y'all we got a little time here got a little time let's go into the Old Testament let's go into the Old Testament in the Old Testament there's a rendition of, of, of being bound to God that I like it's in Psalm 73 Psalm 73 beginning at verse number 22 this is good preaching if I don't mind saying so myself thank you Roosevelt by the way, Roosevelt has not been fired either. Okay. Roosevelt's got some, some issues going on. I said to Roosevelt, I know you support me. Sit there and talk to me. You ain't got to walk all the way up here in your crutches. No, seriously. No, seriously. You ain't got to walk all the way up here in your crutches. I know you support me. When you get, when you get healed, rush the pulpit. Amen. That's just good wisdom. That's, I try to be the best pastor I can be. Psalm 73. Psalm 73, verse 22. Psalm 73, verse 22. Everybody that's there, say amen. amen. Okay, check this out. Listen to this. So foolish was I and ignorant. I was a beast before thee. I could preach that right there. Because <laughs> you know some of y'all was some beasts before you met Jesus. Well, you better be glad some of them folks sitting around you are saved because they was a beast. <laughs> <Woo>. <laughs> the 
David said? David said, so foolish was I and ignorant, I was a beast before thee. Nevertheless, I am continually with thee. Thou hast holden me by my right hand. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel and afterward receive me to glory. Check this out. Look at how bound he is to him. Who have I in heaven but you? And there is none upon the earth that I desire before, beside thee. My flesh and my heart faileth. But God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. For lo, for lo, they that are far from thee perish. Thou hast destroyed all them that go a whoring from thee. A whoring. Y'all didn't know that was in the Bible before y'all said it. <laughs> but it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all thy works. Again, this is all about being bound to God, committed to God. We've got to get committed to God because God is tired of us a whoring. Is that, is that what it says? Okay. God is tired of us a whoring. He's a jealous God. He says, I want your commitment. So why are you a whoring? Are y'all uncomfortable? I'm just, I'm just reading the Bible. You, if you're going to send me an email, I'm going to just send you the scripture. That's all I'm going to do. I'm going to just send you the same scripture I'm reading. Because that's what the scripture said. So I ain't making up nothing. This ain't Baltimore coming out of me. This King James Version Bible. Either you are committed or you are a whoring. I told, I, as I said at the 8 o'clock service, this is the introduction to the series. The introduction is to allow you to figure out whether or not you want to come back for the rest of the month. Okay. God used this dude in the Old Testament named Hosea. Any of y'all heard of Hosea? H Hosea, when you get some time to go read the book, it is an amazing book, Hosea. God told Hosea to go get him a wife. <laughs> a wife, a wife. Uh, but this, this this wife had an occupation in the red light district. Okay. Yeah, she had an occupation. And, 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 and so, 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 so he said, go get that wife and, and marry that wife. And he, because he was committed to God, y'all better hear this. Because he, com he was committed to God, he did what God told him to do and went and married that woman. Now, that woman Y'all know y'all can take a pig out the pig pen, clean him up, and put um. What y'all wearing these days? What y'all wearing? Is he can't say Chanel number five no more. That's what. That's how. Thank you. Um, whatever she just said. Um, you put all that, smell them up good. Eventually they gonna go back to the hog pen, unless there's been a change of heart. And hogs don't change heart just because you dress them up and bring them to church. You really don't want me to say what I feel like saying next. <laughs> no, you really don't. Let me just keep going and where I'm going. <clears throat> she married him and they got married and then she went back out there and started doing what she was doing. She went out there a whoring. God told her, here's some good news. This might be the best news you hear all day. God told Hosea, go get your wife. Hosea said, what? <laughs> She's out there cheating on me like we do on God. She's out there cheating on me and you want me to go get her. God says, yeah, I want you to go get her. God, what are you stewing here? What's the lesson to be learned? 
the lesson to be learned is that even when we go a whoring God still wants us to come back and be committed told you that was going to be the best news you heard all day but understand this sooner or later you got to change your heart somebody that's in adultery right now somebody that's in adultery right now I need you to hear me I need you to hear me oh yeah I picked it up in the spirit that quick yeah I sure did you in adultery right now your relationship with the person outside of your marriage will not change until you get into the presence of God and say God I need you to change my heart because somebody has stolen your heart from the, per from, from the person who you gave it to when you first got married and now you are a whore ring but I hear God say that if you get into my presence I'll change your heart I am not scared to preach y'all I don't know why y'all looking at me like that the nerve of him to deal with them the nerve of me not to deal with it you need a change of heart so you can stop a whoring. I think I'll preach a little bit longer now. But David, David says, David says, it's good for me to draw near unto God. It's good for me to be close to God. Can I tell y'all something in 2014? It's going to be good for you to be near to God. Stay close, stay close and committed to God. It's gonna be good for you. Don't allow other people to dictate your relationship with God. I don't like all this stuff. I don't like it. I don't like it. You ain't gotta like everything. Can I tell you this? In commitment, when you make a commitment, you're not gonna like everything that the commitment requires. I was telling them this morning, the eight service, that when I joined the military, it was a six-year commitment. When I first joined, long time ago, I signed up for four years, and then the recruiter said, oh, by the way, it's a six-year commitment. It's like, what is wrong with you? I signed up for four. What do you mean six? He says, oh, yeah, even when you get out, we still got you. Why didn't you tell me that for us? <laughs> I'm just joking. So when you, when, you, when you sign up for a commitment, you may not like everything that you got to do. But because it's a commitment, and you know that the commitment you made is for your good. Because you signed up for the gym. You signed up for the exercise class. You signed up for the personal trainer. Don't come crying to me because he's making you lift all those weights. Commitment Amen. is for your good. Amen. Okay, I did that didn't go. Commitment. So I wrote down this note. Oh, here it is. I wrote down this note. Commitment, check this out. Commitment means staying loyal to what you said you were going to do long after the mood you set it in has left let me see I'm gonna say it again commitment means staying loyal to what you said you were gonna do long after the mood you set it in has left one more time Jesus y'all make a preacher work up in this church commitment means staying loyal to what you said you were going to do long after the mood you set it in has left did you get it yet you get it hold on I'll give you the personal note on it hold on let me have this one. come with me Do you take this woman to love and to hold from this day forward for better or for worse, for richer or for poor? I am just so in love. I do. I do. The mood says, I do. 
You may now. Excuse me one second. Kiss the bride. Hold up. I just made a commitment. And I was in a pretty good mood when I made that commitment. Commitment means staying loyal to what you said you were going to do long after the mood you said it in has left. I come home 18 months later. No dinner on the table. She ain't got on, she got on them plaid pajamas. Head wrapped up in one of them dang handkerchiefs. Commitment says, although the mood is gone. Oh, I'm preaching better y'all ain't me. The mood is gone. But yet I stay loyal to what I said. That I was going to love her and cherish her for better. And right now, this is worse. But I live up to my commitment. Which means I don't start looking at none of y'all. Because you got your head dead last night. My commitment is to that gang handkerchief over here. Even though the mood is gone. Come on now, talk to me. So... When you get so enthusiastic, great church service, the spirit of the Lord is just moving. Anybody want Jesus? Absolutely. Woo! This is come kind of service. I want, I want Jesus. I want Jesus. I want Jesus because I'm feeling good about the church service. The preacher was pretty good. Told a couple of jokes, even made you feel good. But that same commitment that you make up here when you're feeling good is the same commitment you got to keep when all hell break out. When you go back to the boys on your corner and you tell them you're saved and they look at you and say, come on, get a drink with us. You say to them, no, I made a commitment. Oh, well, I can't get nobody say anything. Let, let, let me show it to you then. Let me, let me show it to you. I'm almost done. This, gonna be, this series is going to be crazy. I'm trying to tell you. Um, let, let me show it to you. Let me show it to you. That ain't what I want to show you. Um, um, hold on. Is that the one I want to show you? Because I got so many scriptures, y'all. This is ridiculous how many scriptures I got. It is crazy. Um, um, okay, let's do this one. Luke 14. Go to Luke 14, 25. Is everybody okay? Everybody okay? Y'all y'all, y'all keep praying for me. Keep praying for me. Um, Somebody prophesied to me on Facebook, told me I need to get back to being a shepherd and being a pastor. Almost, almost uh, lost my commitment. Uh, almost lost my commitment. But you know, but you know, I, I said this in my leaders meeting on, on, on yesterday. I said this, I said that there are some battles in 2014, I'm just not gonna fight. Some things just don't even deserve my attention nor energy. And I gave my energy to some stuff in 2013 that frustrated me. And I'm just not going to have the same level of frustration this year that I had last year. So please forgive me if I don't give all my energy to your craziness. <laughs> okay, let's go on. Luke 14, 25. Luke 14, 25. This is New Living Translation. For some reason, I went back and forth. I don't know why. Um, Luke 14, 25. A large crowd, a large crowd. Is I'm re am I reading the right thing? Okay, a large crowd was following Jesus. He turned around, got sick of all these folk following him, and said to them, if you want to be my disciple, listen to this. This is stuff we don't teach about commitment. Listen to this. If you want to be my disciple, you must hate everyone else by comparison. 
your father and mother, wife, children, brothers and sisters. Yes, even your own life. Otherwise, you cannot be my disciple. Now, I want you to hear what he just now said. He says this. I'll put it in a different way. If you don't love me better than you love them, then you can't be my disciple. Okay, let's keep moving. Verse 27, and if you do not carry your own cross and follow me, you cannot be my disciple. As I said on this morning, I believe that we think we fulfill this requirement by wearing a cross. He didn't tell you to wear a cross. He told you to bear a cross. Bearing a cross is the indication of the death that we die to ourselves. Verse number 28, but don't, but don't, listen to this. Um, but don't begin, don't begin until you count the cost. Take that down. Take, take the scriptures down real quick. I need, I need y'all to hear something I, I, I said. I read that scripture, and when I read that scripture, I looked at it and I said, oh my God. He says, don't come to me unless you count the cost first of what it's going to cost you. And I said, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. Cynthia, I used to tell people because they would say to me, they're not ready to be saved. Because they don't want to give up this, and they don't want to do this, they don't want, I don't want to do this, and I don't want to do that, and I don't want to do that. And I would say to them, oh, don't worry about that stuff. Y'all are getting uncomfortable, ain't you? Don't worry about all that stuff. Because you get saved, and the Lord will take care of all that. Wait a minute, I'm getting ready to say something. You get ready very, very uncomfortable when I say it. That's a lie. Uh oh, I just now messed up. Let me tell you why it's a lie. Because when you get saved, that don't mean you ain't going to still have some desire for the world. That don't mean that you ain't going to still want to go to the club. When you get saved, it don't mean that you. Come on now, some of y'all been saved 23 years and still got some of those desires. And you sitting up here trying to be all religious on me right now? How dare you? It doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean all that stuff that we tell them that, that, that hey, you can say you ain't going to want to go to club no more. You ain't going to want to listen to Beyonce no more when you get saved. Then why y'all watching, all y'all watching Soul Train Awards? Why? Why? If you don't want none of that music no more, why y'all watching Soul Train Award and posting about it on Facebook as the show is going along? You are lying and the truth ain't in you. So Jesus says, before you make this decision, you better make sure this is what you want to do. Check it out. Let's get back to the scripture. I ain't scared to preach. I'm going to show y'all some stuff. But you don't begin until you count the cost. Verse 28, that's what I'm reading. For who would begin construction of a building without first calculating the cost to see if there's enough money to finish it? Otherwise, you might complete only the foundation before running out of money. And then everyone would laugh at you. They would say, that, that's, the, that's the person who started the building and couldn't afford to finish it. Speak, Lord. Or, who, or what king would go to war against another king without first sitting down with his counselors to discuss whether his army of 10,000 can defeat the 20,000 soldiers marches against him. And if he can't, he will send a delegation to discuss the terms of, of peace while the enemy is still far away. Now check this out. Verse 33. So you cannot become my disciple without giving up everything you own. And you need to count the cost of that before you make a decision. I know y'all don't like my preaching. I know, I know you don't like, but you got to count the cost of that. You got to count the cost of whether you are more into the material now or the eternal future. That's what the real decision is about. Am I more about today or am I about eternity? Because everybody, in a sense, will experience eternal life. But the question is, where will you spend it? A com smoking or non-smoking, thank you. Where will you spend it? That, that comes from the choir. Smoking or non-smoking. I take no credit for that. Where will you spend eternity? 
because <laughs> don't upstage me no more <laughs> because I want to spend eternity in a non-smoking section I make a commitment to Christ now for the sufferings of this world are not worthy to be compared with the glory that will be revealed so you have to count up the cost. I'm almost done. God, I'm not almost done, but I need to be almost done. So what Jesus is telling us is that every fiber of our being, every facet of our lives must be committed to loving and serving God. This means that we don't hold back nothing from him because he didn't hold back nothing from us. That's the type of commitment that he wants from us, that we don't hold back anything. I skip some of this. So, oh, by the way, last, I got two last things I want to say. Okay, I think y'all got it. I think you got it for the introduction. Again, I'm going to be preaching this all month. Um, so, for me to be committed to him, understand this. If you're going to be a Christian, it's a popular label, but it's a very unpopular lifestyle. It's a popular label. Everybody, everybody likes to say that they're Christians. But the lifestyle of a Christian is a very unpopular lifestyle. And if you're going to be committed to him, you got to be committed to live the unpopular brand of Christianity. And God is looking for some people that will live the unpopular brand of Christianity rather than the popular brand of Christianity. Oh, I'm saved. Oh, I go to church. Oh, I do this and I do that. As a matter of fact, I know the pastor. I'm his Facebook friend. Being my Facebook friend don't get you to heaven. The only thing that gets you to heaven is being a face-to-face -face friend with God. That was pretty good. So what's the requirement for commitment? Here's my last thing. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12 verse number one and two says this King James Version I beseech you I beg you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service and be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Again, this has only been my introduction. We're going to get into the depth of this. We're going to talk about this thing of commitment. We're going to talk about what's the, how it's characterized. How do we do it? How do we do it? Because I found this out about me, not you, about me. I found out that there's areas in my life that I know I need to commit to God, but it seems like it's the hardest thing to do. It's the hardest thing to do. Why is it so hard for me to commit to God in these areas? And I don't even need nobody to tell me that's what I'm supposed to be doing. I already know it. We're going to talk about that and we're going to break that. We're going to break that. But God says, listen, I need your commitment. I need your commitment. Stand with me. I'm done. I need your commitment. So here is the question. Same question we dealt with at our morning service. I want to deal with it again. I look back over 2013 and I begin to recognize there's some areas in my life that I have not committed to God. I haven't, been, I haven't been committed. Going through the motions, whatever we want to call it, but I have not been committed. And I don't want my 2014 to be a mirror of 2013. I want to ensure that I give God my total commitment because that's what God requires of me. I beseech you therefore, brethren, that you would present yourself unto God, sacrifice yourself unto him, be committed to him. So if you just want to get this together like I needed to get it together, to just say to God, I don't want my 2014 to mirror my 2013, I want to be committed to you in all my, all my days and in all my ways. I want you to come join me at the altar and we're just going to pray together. We're just going to pray together. Come on, we're just going to pray together. I want to be committed to the Lord. I want to be committed to the Lord. It's an old song that we used to sing. It's not old, but relatively old. The songs that we sing today don't last. 
so relative though simply says i give myself away i give myself away and that's all i want to do i just want to lord i'm going to give myself to you i'm going to give myself to you so i can be committed to you 2014 year of commitment i just declared that for my life a year of commitment i'm going to be committed to you so just come join me if that's what you need Give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. Before we pray, can we just defend it to the Lord? I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself myself away Lord I want to be committed to you I want to be committed to you I give myself away I give myself away so you can you give myself I give myself away oh Lord I give myself away Let's just sing it Can one more time. I'm gonna pray. Give myself, I give myself away. Oh yeah. Ooh, I give myself away. So you. So Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come to you because we have a simple prayer. That prayer is that we don't want our 2014 to mirror our 2013. We recognize that there are areas and times of our lives that we have not been committed to you. We've been distracted. We've allowed other things to come before you. We put other things in, in, in the priority place. And Lord, we, we apologize. We repent of it right now in the name of Jesus. Forgive us. You told us that you were to be first. And so God, we are ready to commit our lives to you. Not just today, not just tomorrow, but our lives to you. That we will be committed in everything that we do. That we would not be afraid of anything that comes at us, no storm that may rise because of our commitment, whether we lose friends or whatever, it does not matter. Father, we are going to be committed to you. And so, Father, I pray for my sons and my daughters, my brothers and my sisters, my those that are gathered in this altar right now, because I understand being in the place that they have they are in or have been in father i pray that you would strengthen us to make a commitment a real commitment that we will not diminish it that we will not diminish it but we'll walk strong in it teach us how to live up to your requirement teach us how to be the son or the daughter of god that you called us to be strengthen us to make decisions that you would have us to make and do the things that you would have us to do father right now we commit our ways to you our will to you our lives to you our families to you our finances to you our mind to you our body to you we commit it to you right now you are sovereign you are lord you're in control and I thank you, thank you, that by the mercies of God, I'm able to present myself to you as a living sacrifice. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, before we clap, before we clap. I hear the Lord just keep saying, commit your ways to me. Commit your ways to me let me be your god you just now did this by my mercy i could have not allowed you to be where you are today but by my mercy i have allowed it and so now because of my mercy you commit yourself to me and everything and you'll see me now that well may not be the last thing but the other thing i hear the lord saying says i want my time back with you I used to have time with you 
He says, I want my time back with you. Give me back my time. And your life will never be the same after that. He says, don't complicate things. Don't complicate things. Don't, don't, don't be, feel like I need to run, 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 do, 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 and all this kind of stuff. Or, 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 no, he just says, all I want you to do is just give me back my time. And if you give me back my time, you'll see the restoration. And you'll see what I, what I have for you. Okay? God bless you. Everybody give a little hand praise. My life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself. I give myself to you. Come on, everybody say my life. My life is not my own. To you. Myself to you. One more time, come on. My life is not my own. Yeah. My life is not my own. To you I belong. To you I belong. I give myself. I give myself. Standing. We're standing. Let's go home. Father, thank you for your word today. Thank you for what our hearts have received. Thank you for this series of on commitment. Father, I pray that we as a people, that we would honor your word by not just being hearers of your word, but being doers of your word. Thank you for the prophetic word of our choir on today, that today is the best day of our lives because of the commitment that we've made. Now we go for this place, but not from your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have a great week.